In this video, we're going to talk about solubility curves. Before we can get into solubility curves, we have to cover two terms. The first is unsaturated. So an unsaturated solution is when the solute completely dissolves, leaving no remaining solid. So if you're making Kool-Aid, this would be dissolving that Kool-Aid powder in water, and there isn't any Kool-Aid powder at the bottom. It's completely dissolved in the water. A saturated solution is a solution that has reached the point where no more solute can be dissolved. Any more solute will appear as a precipitate at the bottom, a solid. Okay, so you're making Kool-Aid. You start pouring in powder, right? And it's dissolving. At some point, it's going to reach the point where the water can't hold any more of the powder. And then you'll start to see a bunch of the solid collect at the bottom. So maybe you've made Kool-Aid like this before. You know, you like your Kool-Aid extra strong. So you put in a lot of powder. And then you notice this layer of powder that starts to form at the bottom. That would be a saturated solution. Okay, so how can you make an unsaturated solution saturated? So remember, unsaturated is where you... Um, Add powder and it will dissolve. And obviously, you could add more because there isn't that layer of solid at the bottom. So, to reach the point of saturation, you can add more solute. So, again, thinking of Kool Aid, that would be our powder. You can evaporate off some of the solvent. So, the water, okay, so the water is like where you can put the powder. So, if you eliminate places for that powder to dissolve, you're going to be able to make it saturated. And then finally, cool the solution. If you cool the solution, it's going to be able to hold less, so it will reach that saturation point. Okay, so this is a solubility curve. And the question is, how many grams of potassium chloride dissolved in 100 grams of H2O at 40 degrees? How many grams can be dissolved in 100 grams of H2O? Okay, so if you look on the graph here, it says we have 100 grams of water. And the axis here is grams of solute. So we want to find uh, the point at 40 degrees, potassium chloride. Potassium chloride is this curve right here. Okay. So how many grams of potassium chloride can be dissolved in 100 grams of H2O at 40 degrees? So 40 degrees, we just kind of go up here. And we'll just knock that over to the y-axis here. So we can hold 40 grams. And again, I'm looking at this point right here. So at 40 degrees, we can hold 40 grams of potassium chloride. Here's another one. So will 80 grams of KNO3 dissolved in 100 grams of H2O at 50 degrees be saturated or unsaturated? All right, so KNO3, so let's find that curve. That's this curve right here. All right, and 80 grams of KNO3 at 50 degrees. So here's 50 degrees. Let's go up. And 80 grams. So it's right on the curve here. So this will be a saturated solution. Okay, so a couple things to note. Um, a point on the curve is saturated. A point under curve is unsaturated. And an easy way to remember this, under unsaturated. 
Okay, here's another one. So 70 grams of KNO3 at 50 degrees, saturated or unsaturated. Okay, so if we go over here, this point is not on the curve, so this will be unsaturated. So here's a more complicated graph. Got a bunch of things going on here. How many grams of KNO3 can be dissolved in 200 grams of H2O at 20 degrees? Okay, well, oh boy. We have a little bit of a problem here. So this says 100 grams of H2O, and this is asking about 200 grams of H2O. Well, let's see how many we have at 100 grams. So here's 20 degrees. KNO3 is this curve right here. Okay, so let's go up right here and then go over. So we can do 30 grams in 100 grams of water. So if it's asking about 200 grams, we just simply double it. So we're doubling the amount of water we have, so we're going to double the amount that we can hold. All right. How many grams of K2Cr2? O7 can be dissolved in 50 grams of H2O at 90 degrees. Well, again, here's the problem. We have 100 grams on our graph, and it's asking about 50. So just like we did in our previous example, when we have twice the amount of water, we double it. If we have half the amount of water, we have it. So let's find it at 90 degrees. Okay, and we're looking at this curve right here. So let's go on up. Okay, and then go over. So we hit 70 here. So if we have 70 grams at um, 100 grams of water, we just have it. So 35 grams in 50 grams of H2O. In our last example, it says, what temperature is required for 80 grams of NaNO3, or sorry, NaNO, yeah, NaNO3, Ugh, it's early when I'm recording this, to dissolve 100 grams of H2O, or in H2O. 80 grams, so here's 80 grams, and it's asking about the temperature this time. So we're looking at NaNO3, which is this right here. So we'll follow this over and we'll go down. Okay. So if you look, we hit 10 degrees. All right. Here's one more. If 50 grams of NaNO3 were dissolved in 100 grams of H2O at 10 degrees, how many more grams could be dissolved before the solution is saturated? All right. So again, here's what we need to do. Let's look at 10 degrees Celsius, right? NaNO3. So we'll follow this up to our curve right here. So we know that we can put 80 in, and we've already put 50 in. So we have 80 grams NaNO3 at 10 degrees Celsius. That's saturated. We have 50 in it already. And it says, how many more grams can we put in? So if we've got 50 in there right now, it will hold a total of 80. We just subtract to get 30 grams more. That's it.